Coming up, Expedition 18 lands safely. Kepler removes its dust cover. The Mercury 7 50th anniversary. And we've got a live interview with the Space Renaissance Initiative. All that and a whole lot more on this April 10th edition of Space Vidcast Live. <laughs> Welcome to Space Vidcast Live. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me is a beautiful, wonderful, lovely, talented, and incredibly intelligent Carrie Ann Higginbotham. She is my astro wife. You like that? I do. Yeah? I do. <laughs> Big smile. That's a good one. We can keep that one. Uh, you know, I got to say, I cannot <laughs> believe, we did this in the daily podcast, but I cannot believe, let's, can we, do we have a Mission Madness graphic? I think we've got one. We've got, we did the Mission Madness through NASA, NASA Ed, NASA, NASA Ed put on Mission to Madness, right. and I had my picks, Apollo 11, mm -hmm. um, Skylab, I mean, my picks made perfect sense. Yeah, I mean, Apollo you can see here, there's like 62, 64 different missions, Look and, at that. Uh, and yeah, you know what? One amazing. SPB one. SP. You, you, you're probably thinking to yourself, "What's SPB?" I never even heard of SPB it's before. It's a freaking balloon. It's a. <laughs> this is what won. This beat out Apollo Eleven. It beat out Skylab. It beat out. Or this is what won. I don't understand. It is kind of cool. I mean, it's a big balloon. It's a balloon. It's it's kind of cool. Oh, man. It's a super pressure balloon. Oh, next year. All right, next year. Here's what's going to happen. Because NASA is going to do... The thing is that next year, Apollo 11 is not going to be on there. It, well, how do we know that? Well, it, it already was in this bracket. I'm just saying, next year, all you space vidcasters, you got to rally behind whatever my picks are. Her picks don't matter. And we're going to make sure that the right team, the right mission wins. See how we flinched? flinched. <laughs> I've got them trained well. You do. You know, mm -hmm. uh, great news, well, the sort of good news, we get kind of attached to our ISS mission commanders, don't we? We do. Because we had Peggy. When Peggy left, it was like, nobody's going to be like, Peggy. We miss Peggy. <laughs> and then we, had, uh, then we had Mike up there. Mike. And they're oh, like, no, oh, Mike, he's actually like awesome. Mike. So Expedition 18 has landed. We actually have some landing coverage footage of Expedition 18. And uh, it, was, it was a smooth landing. It went, uh, it went very, very well. Yeah, they hit the ground nicely. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the parachute opened. <laughs> Thunk. I mean, you know, uh, it's yeah. as, it was as smooth as it could be, so really. Who, who's replacing Mike on Expedition 18? Okay, so I, I was practicing this earlier. It's Gennetti. Oh, no. Padalka. Uh, Gennetti Padalka. Padalka. Mm -hmm. Gennetti Padalka. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, what do we think? We have the cool little... Uh, you know, um, you know, all day and a half that he's been doing yeah, it. I suppose it's really hard to tell. He's been it? he hasn't broken anything yet. Yep. Uh, the the urinator thing is still going. But the good news is that <laughs> I mean, the good news is that say? the good news is that it landed like we said. We, <laughs> it landed safely, and you know, prior we, we had there have been some issues with the Soyuz capsules landing off course or with a little bit ac more extra G forces as it was coming down right. towards the planet. And that's bad when you've been on the International Space Station for six plus months. And you're a little fragile. You are. You're a little bit more fragile. My understanding is that you've you've lost some bone mass. Mm -hmm. uh, it just it just comes with it. And as such, you know, having extra G forces when you're coming back down towards a planet equals bad. Yeah, there's enough but G forces the way it is. And they don't need any more. Well, that's great. So we're excited <laughs> to see the the new commander, Gennady Padalka. And uh, I didn't we'll, even we'll have see, to look at my notes we'll that time. We'll see how it goes, and uh, it, it will be fun. Because Thank you to Chris Soyuz, who's in the chat room, who changes his name a little bit, but it's usually Chris underscore something. But he's been helping me with, with my pronunciations. pronunciations. Yes. Isa? Yes, <laughs> with my Isa pronunciations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, an, n another interesting news item, Kepler... Yes has uh, pretty much taken, this they, uh, NASA describes it, I believe, Kepler's as... Kepler's woken up. Well, yeah, sort of. NASA <laughs> describes it as taking the dust cover off. I describe it as taking the lens cap off. Yeah. Check out this cool animation. It's the same kind of idea you can obviously see here. Yeah. That, that cover that had previously been on Kepler that now has obviously been taken off now. So Kepler is now free to move about the the uh, cabin as it show, <laughs> so, so pleases the, uh, the seatbelt sign has been and turned off and uh, so they're gonna be firing Kepler up soon it'll be able to find other earths yes it's ready to it's ready to look at things <laughs> that's, that's gonna be great I, I'm excited to see what Kepler what Kepler sees, sees. I'm glad to, I'm mm. happy to 
Some words go there. I don't sure. know. No, Kepler is going to be a cool mission. You know, a lot it of these is. space. I like these space uh, telescopes, right? I mean, yeah, you Hubble have a has thing for telescopes. I do. Hubble has Hubble has its advantages. Right. Uh, Kepler is uh, different, right? It's it's not really a replacement for Hubble. It's just it's different. And then the James Webb Space Telescope is JWST. JWST is pretty much a replacement for Hubble, and I'm excited. To see well, that no, quad. but my, but I thought one doesn't Hubble do like infrared and JWST doesn't? You know, they do have their ranges of light that they they do take care of. Right? Actually, we have a okay. graph. Well, you know, we'll cover that in a few. So there is a yes. there's a graph that Two shows points, that shows exactly which one does what <laughs> and where. And uh, today, well, yesterday because the show is for April 10th, but yes. but yesterday, April 9th was April the 9th. 50th anniversary of the announcing. Is it? Of I believe the it was like Mercury the Seven picking of the Mercury Seven, the, the first Mercury Seven, the original seven astronauts. Yep, and, and here you got a, a shot of them here, and uh, these these are the guys. I who, love this old footage. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love their little bow ties. It's just so adorable. Should we do space vidcast? And, should I do it in a bow tie? Oh, I think you should. Oh, man. You got the little. You gotta have the. We can slick your hair back just like that and everything. Uh, this entire video is on spacevidcast.com, so you guys can see it in its entirety a little bit later. Later on, uh, I, I remember correctly. I, Glenn says a couple of things that are really funny. I mean, these guys are, are hysterical. And when you think about it, they were risking their lives for something that they were a little unsure of. You know, Yuri Gagarin, which we'll get to with Yuri's night a little bit, mm -hmm. was the first human in space. Crazy mofo that he was. He just went <laughs> up and said, "Yeah, okay," you know. <laughs> but it's not like our astronauts knew a whole lot more. So yep. here they are in, in the vomit comet and. I just, this footage is so much fun. I, I just absolutely love it. it. The video, I think you said, was about 20 minutes long, yep. something like that, mm -hmm. and it goes through the press conferences and all of their training, and then when they were up in the air and space and coming back down and some of the difficulties they had with Mercury uh, flying around with, you know, m miscommunications and stuff like that. Uh, but in general, it, it went pretty smoothly. Uh, I think, it, relatively textbook, as textbook as something that they've never done before could possibly go. No, they had, I mean, they had their issues. There's right, no, 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 no. They, they were, right. Especially, they, there was the heat shield issue, you know, when right. they thought they lost a heat shield, and, you know, just a, a whole, it was just a big adventure. And, you know, that's part of what Space Vincast is trying to do, is bring back some of that, uh, that sense of adventure and wonder and, and awe and, and just that coolness that is space, dare I say, makes space commonplace. I'm just... I'm just going to throw that out That's there. That's really kind of catchy. It, you know, it really... You know, it, we should, hmm. like, it really put is. that somewhere. Uh, you know, and uh, before we go into break, <laughs> I just want to mention that this weekend, this co coming up weekend, is Yuri's Night. The official, It's been going on for a while since April 4th because it's yes. on Easter Sunday, so I think they kind of extended it for two weekends. Uh, but uh, the official date is April 12th. Yes. And April certainly... April 12th, 1961. If you can, go to your local Yuri's Night party because there, there are Yuri's Night parties all around the world and I believe even at the International Space Space station. And so. in Second Life. And so for <laughs> those of you people who are like, there isn't a year is not party by me. Second Life. Second Life. Hello. Absolutely. And we're going to attempt to, if we can, now bandwidth may be an issue, we're still trying to figure that all out, but if we can, we're going to stream our local Yuri's Night party in Minneapolis live, which is being done at Minicon, which is, I believe, the it's U.S.'s longest-run... It's the longest-run longest run science fiction convention in the U.S. This will be the 44th year of Minicon, wow. uh, which I think is very cool. Nerds. Well, it's uh, Minnesota. It's cold. What else are we going to do? I don't know. I, I, Except I agree. read Carl Sagan and Isaac Asimov. I mean, <laughs> come on. Rod and very for the win. So check out your local <laughs> Yuri's Night chapter. Is that what that would be? I'm not sure what you would call it, but check out Yuri's Night.org, I believe it dot is. Net. Dot Yuri's net. Night I always dot do that. Net. Yuri's Night. Dot net and uh, see when where your local party is and certainly attend. It's going to be a hoot and a half. When we come back, we've got Annie from the Space Renaissance Initiative. We'll be doing a live interview with her, so have your questions ready. And we're going to be talking about the future of space. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Crow River Coffee Company in Watertown, Minnesota. Situated on the bank of the beautiful Crow River, we offer espresso drinks, delicious food, live music, bulk beans, and artisan items. You can see us at CrowRiverCoffee.com. Thanks!
Yeah, we certainly like to thank Crow River Coffee Company for hosting, and, and they, they provide the space for Space Vidcast. <laughs> Ironic! <laughs> I didn't think that went all the way through, I guess. <laughs> and uh, as such, we have a coffee of the month every month. And this particular coffee of the month, we've doubled up. But this is it's the, pronounce that for me. It's the Nicaraguan Segovia. Thank you. That's the coffee of the month. Go to CrowRiverCoffee.com, order your coffee of the month from them, and you will get a Space Vidcast sticker. It is the only way to get the official, what are they, vinyl stickers for yes. Space Vidcast. You can you put can them put on your on car. car. You can put You've them anywhere them on, outside. Uh, on computers I got and them stuff. on my computer. Yeah, so it's the only way to get that sticker is to order coffee, and you're helping the coffee company who helps us, so you're actually helping us, and we're helping you. So by buying coffee, you're you helping help yourself. You help you. That's how that works. <laughs> you know, one thing we didn't mention is uh, Astro Mike. Oh, that's right. Okay, so the next uh, STS mission that's coming up is STS 125, mm -hmm. which don't ask me about the number thing. We'll go over that some other time. But STS 125 is coming up, and one of the astronauts that is going to be on STS 125 is on Twitter, and his name happens to be Astro underscore Mike. So Astro Mike. And that's him right there. Yes, that that's is a picture him. of him in space. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's a great picture. I love the reflection of Earth and all that other fun stuff going on in there. But he is Twittering out different things about like, you know, uh, they had some training earlier today and it was like time for lunch and then, oh, we just talked to so-and-so and stuff like that. So he's tweeting throughout the day, uh, just kind of keeping you up. It's sort of a slight uh, behind the scenes look at what the sort of the last minute preps are for any mission because they were already done and ready to go for this mission back in September right. and then Hubble had some issues and so they needed a, uh, some retraining for mm -hmm. stuff like that but you know it's not like they slack off it's it's kind of like running a marathon you still have to do training right up until the time of going even if it's just a little bit here there whatever so I'd be um, curious to see if they find a way for him to Twitter in space obviously it's not gonna work on a cell phone but you probably know probably not but you never well, know they have bandwidth on the International Space Station this is they true. may have some on the space shuttle too right I, I, he could, I mean, he could downlink leggy, them or something and or yeah. somebody yeah, it'd be really cool something. if you were to interact with an astronaut you know while they're on I, I realize it's kind of a lot to ask because their missions are jam-packed but yeah it just but be, it'd be cool nonetheless Jeff in the chat room is saying he's got 23,000 followers and that's been in the last like five days yeah why are they following space Vidcast? what's wrong with these people I I don't know we need to get Astro Mike on we should there we go Speaking of guests, we have got Annie from the Space Renaissance Initiative. Yes, we don't have guests. We ha I mean, I know. We've got guests back in the 2.0 series of our <laughs> show. Check that out. Uh, so, Annie, welcome to the show. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Uh, tell me, what is the Space Renaissance Initiative? Ooh, well, you broke up a little bit there. Say that again. So how, how is that different than, say, a Virgin Galactic or a, um, um, uh, you know, a, an X-Core or a, a um, you know, any one of those privatized spaces, companies? It's the cheap part. <laughs> it's the cheap part. Cheap access to space. So how are you going to get cheap access to space, though? I mean, these companies are, you know, Virgin Galactic and all these other companies, they're working towards something fairly similar. I mean, they're taking the price down from, say, $35 million down to, you know, uh, 200000 which is still expensive. But what are you doing that's different than what they're doing? Or, or are, you, are you targeting a slightly different uh, audience? I mean, you're not building spacecraft like these other companies are. You're more of a, a movement, correct? Correct. So how does that, how do people... Uh, get involved in this? How do they how do they help help this out? Well, keep in mind, they won't be able to see the link in the live show. So uh, let no, us yeah, know. No, yeah, she's in the chat room. Yeah, but they can't see it in the show. So what, what's oh, that link? Oh, I see link? what you're saying. That address is Dot org. Dot org. <laughs> yep. So what are you doing? What are you guys doing specifically that is is going to help this movement out? I mean, go into a little bit of detail. Uh, why is your movement uh, better than anyone else, or is anyone else even doing this?
So, so what is it that sets you apart? What, what makes you guys different? And that is, uh, I mean, that's really cool. What's the end goal? You're going to get a consortium of people together, I assume, and then, and where are you going to go with that? What, what, what happens to that consortium of people? Because you, you can talk about making cheap space flight and cheap space access, but realistically, it, you know, there's equipment, and there's, it, it, it's hard to get all that stuff together. So, you know, you get these people together. How are you going to make this a uh, 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 lower cost for everyone involved? Just a numbers game? Yep, that's strictly it. The more people get on board, the faster the cost will go down, just like cell phones. Now, one of the things I've seen, I've seen a lot of topics bounced around the Space Renaissance Initiative, and one of the, thing, one of the things is um, uh, like space-based solar power and some of this next generation power stuff. Is that part of the same movement, or is that, how does that all fit in? A space-based solar power and um, um, power f from the audio movement. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, power from uh, uh, space and next generation space uh, technology for getting power down to Earth and getting our dependence on uh, uh, fo uh, foreign oil and fossil fuels and reducing that. I've seen that being bounced around in space uh, renaissance a little bit. Uh, is that the same part of the movement or is that something a little bit different? How so? Reducing the cost of space travel itself, or in uh, in uh, space privatization and actually getting into space, or what, what is it going to reduce the cost of? It will eventually just reduce the cost of the consumer. How will it end up doing that, though? Sorry. How how will it end up doing that? So how will it, how will it reduce the cost to the consumer? Sure, no problem. So yeah, we'll we'll fix that. We've got a little bit of a fun audio glitch going on, so we'll fix we'll fix that up, and we'll get right back with Annie. Uh, but you know, the Space Renaissance Initiative at spacerenaissance.org is uh, it's something that we found um, um, through a bunch of really big names in space, and, and uh, yeah, it, it's it's not a, a little uh, really itty bitty little movement. I mean, there are a lot of really big names behind right. this Right. We're program. not talking like two kids in their basement. No, not at all. And actually there are a lot of different chats and, and uh, things that are going on. And actually there was a, uh, there was a presentation a couple weeks ago in, I believe it was London. In London, yeah. Uh, uh, kind of announcing a little bit about uh, Space Renaissance and what's going on there. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened in that, uh, that presentation a few weeks ago? Oh, I really wish I could. <laughs> I was not there. <laughs> Uh, do you know what they do you know what they covered in that particular uh, uh, release? I know that they were working on uh, getting those PDFs and whatnot out the door. Mm -hmm. Yes. They one moment. Sure. Uh, they met I refuse to comment without seeing something right in front of my face. <laughs> <I'm so sorry. laughs> I know they met at the uh, British and British Interplanetary Society in London uh, for the press conference. Uh, so that was, I believe, was a really kind of a cool thing, um, especially for something like the Space Renaissance Initiative, uh, that it's not just sort of, uh, uh, you know, again, it's not two kids in the basement kind of thing, that it's, it's a real thing going on in real places with real people from all over the world, which is also really nice uh, in general for the Space Renaissance Initiative, that it's, it's uh, it's not just two people in one particular spot. It's a bunch of people in a bunch of, you know, from all over the world, not just mm -hmm. all over a particular country that are all coming together to making it happen, especially if everyone is volunteered. I mean, that's just, 
that's amazing as far as I can, I'm can i concerned. Some of the interesting concepts that have been thrown around are things like, uh, you know, our economy isn't doing so great. One of the ways that we can improve the economy is through uh, the expansion of our space, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, space exploration and, mm -hmm. and uh, space privatization and, and all of that fun jazz. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's a lot of really great information on spacerenaissance.org that talks about all of these different things, space-based solar power, how yes. it can help fix our economy by expanding through space, and, um, um, you know, some of the steps that are necessary to make all of this happen. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's, it, it's a little bit overwhelming, actually, because they've got they've got a lot a of a lot of information. On this. Yeah, yep. I, I mean, there are an entire papers by doctors and 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 you know all this kind of stuff. There's a ton of information, but it's all really really good. Uh, it's sort of like trying to swallow the entire uh, Encyclopedia Britannica in in one you know gulp kind of thing. There's a lot of stuff there, but it's it's all very very interesting and uh, very worthwhile, I think. Uh, so, uh, Ron is the E. Ron's my the E. Hmm, can't pronounce that screen name. Uh, uh, says that's what <laughs> leads us out of the recession. Uh, industry growth is what will lead us out of the recession. Um, you know, and I'll post this question to everyone, Annie, in the chat room as well. Uh, you know, one of the things we helped do the last time we had a huge recession mm -hmm. was we industrialized. Mm -hmm. um, but that made sense because you, we had to build tr railroad tracks and roads and infrastructure in the United States to move goods from point A to point B. Right. Which, you know, you need to be able to move goods f from point A to point B. Right. But what does space industrialization do for us? Um, we're not really moving those goods into, I mean, we, we don't have... It's different this time, right? right? Well, I mean, yeah. that's different. Yeah. So that's just worth throwing out there. See what the chat room has to say about that. And then we'll have an awkward moment of silence. <laughs> uh, so Annie, tell me, uh, what can people do to get involved with uh, Space Renaissance? Talk to Charles F. Bradley just as soon as you get online, but he's awfully, awfully busy. Um, but talk to him. Anyway, Boom! I'm starting to love everyone. <laughs> he is a networking machine, and cool. I completely lost Explorer over here, so I'm no longer in the chat with everyone. That's okay. So I apologize about that. I can't answer your questions. Um, no, that's fantastic. No, that, that's fine. We'll 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 feed those to you. Um, uh, actually, we'll and we'll ask that a chat room right now. Do, does anyone in the chat room have any questions for any? So certainly uh, pass those uh, our way in in the chat at the bottom of the screen. And once you get involved, you said it's completely free, so there's no membership fee or anything else like that. Is that correct? At this time, that is absolutely correct. Maybe someday when we're as big and important as other places, we'll have to stuff like that, <laughs> but right now they just take donations, and that's all. And I, I would like to say um, about the press conference in London, there was actually a pretty interesting turnout. Um, Jerry Stone, a professional presenter from the UK, mm -hmm. actually talked about one of Dr. Patrick Collins' papers, um, and also the Gerard O'Neill But it was about the movement of humans into space and industrialized space for commercial use. And he gave a talk about that. And it all blended together very well, according to Adriano. And that's our president, Adriano Aquino. Mm -hmm. And he said everything went really, really nicely. Well, that's cool. What's the next? And, uh, Go ahead. Our, our, we've definitely supported our movement. We've had some interesting questions. I wish I could <laughs> Maybe I could answer yours a little better. So, uh, what's the, what's the next? Uh, yes! <laughs> awesome! Go internet! <laughs> That's live. Uh, that's a uh, well. Live poor Annie. I mean, she's, there are also storms in her area right yeah. now. So I mean, we just had everything stacked against us at this point. That was awesome. Oh, well, it, it, w you get the idea. So, um, you know, th that's a little bit about Space Renaissance. Mm -hmm. they, they had a, a, a big announcement not that long ago. It's, it's, it's 
really a cool thing that's going on over yes. there. And it's something that I definitely think everyone should check out. Uh, you can do that by going to www.spacerenaissance.com. Dot org, mm -hmm. and you can do that right now today. You can sign up. You can you can help out. You can become part participate in some of the live chats and uh, mm -hmm. Skype chats. And, and if you join the uh, Facebook group, there's a lot of people that are already in it, uh, are part of Space Renaissance Initiative that are part of the Facebook group as well. So you can kind of you know get your space feelers out there into space a lot feelers. of yes, into mm -hmm. a lot of different people who are connected within the space industry in different ways. So that's our show. We'll definitely bring back, uh, we'll, we'll fix out the, some of the technical glitches and bring yes. back uh, Annie and the Space Renaissance Initiative for future shows and uh, get those going for you. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone so much for watching this week. You can watch us live every week. That's Fridays at 2 o'clock a.m. Coordinated Universal Time. For those of you in the United States, that's 7 o'clock on Thursday nights, Pacific Time, 9 o'clock Central Time, 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Mm -hmm. Any uh, closing comments? Do you have any? No, but go to Yuri's night. Yeah, definitely go to Yuri's night. And uh, if you can't make it there, certainly go to Second Life or watch it live on spacevidcast.com slash live. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Oh, we'll see you this weekend and then next week. Oh, yeah. yeah.